I remember Hurricane Charlie on Friday, August 13th. Uh, that was one of the busiest days we've ever had at the State Emergency Operations Center with all the changes in track as Charlie approached the southwest Florida coast. We had initial concerns with Tampa early in the day and then uh, with a slight shift in track, uh, that concern shifted further south towards Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte. The Charlie was anything but normal. He was much, much smaller. He was much too close to the coast and he came through here like a freight train at 22 miles an hour. Like everyone else, we're going, oh my goodness, you know, we weren't expecting this. Uh, uh, hadn't uh, boarded up the house or anything and uh, learned a hard lesson when a hurricane's in the ocean, prepare your house. With Charlie, Orlando was sustained, uh, had sustained winds of 100 miles an hour and a lot of damage. So even in that part of the state, uh, there was a significant amount of damage. I proceeded down to uh, Charlotte County to uh, their parking lot. Uh, upon arrival, um, the building, half the building was severely damaged. Uh, they had lost most communications. I think they had one telephone line working. And this facility was their emergency operations center, their communications center, and also the sheriff's station as well. At the behest of former Hurricane Center Director Max Mayfield, uh, who knowing that we were in a steel building said, that's not where I want you in this storm because it's uh, probably about 25 miles from you. And uh, as it came to be, that meant we had about an hour. So the 15 people that were still with me, uh, we vacated and found our way to the Charlotte County Airport and we rode out the hurricane in the administration building, which had at one time been my alternate EOC. It had storm shutters, storm panels, and um, it, uh, it did very well and held up for us in the 160 plus mile an hour winds. The morning after uh, Charlie came through, uh, uh, you know, we got up and, and went out and it truly looked like a war zone. I mean, with the twisted trees and limbs. I remember in particular seeing uh, lots of uh, pets uh, running around the streets of Wachula uh, just uh, gave a sense for just the chaos that was going on in those communities. I remember dodging power lines as we traveled uh, up US 17 right through those uh, most heavily impacted areas. First and foremost was the, the great concern that we had significant loss of life. In those early hours, we did not know. Uh, we did not know until the search and rescue was completed the following day. Uh, by the assisting fire departments that had come in from all over the southern half of the state of Florida. But that was the great concern because the devastation was widespread and it was complete across uh, the Punta Gorda, Charlotte Harbor, and, and Port Charlotte communities. So uh, the, the welfare of the citizens was my great concern. Spoke to the um, County Emergency Management Director, Wade, and uh, advised him that we were on, our team was there. Uh, fully to support him and within 30 minutes we were fully operational and was able to provide emergency communications uh, for his personnel. And then later that evening uh, Craig Fugate, our director, uh, arrived on scene. And to see the uh, devastation that Charlie brought was really an eye-opener for me as a professional and to see just the impact that these hurricanes have on communities uh, was uh, really an eye-opener for me. You know, we've been told time and time again by people that they were amazed that less than 24 hours after the hurricane, uh, we were able to pro provide commodities in the form of food and, and uh, water and other things, cleaning kits and things for people. And that was only through the effort of our partners here in the state of Florida. I think it's, it's rather dramatic how uh, after Hurricane Charlie, uh, Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte really bounced back as a community. I th if you visit those uh, locations today, there's really not much uh, in the way of Charlie's remnants uh, left behind. Those communities were able to rebuild uh, here in the past five years fairly quickly. And I think it's a testament just to how dedicated everyone at the local, state, and federal levels were to rebuilding uh, these communities that were impacted by this Category 4 hurricane.